Well, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord this last Sunday of February. We come to give God praise today. God has been good to us. He has kept us all through this time. We are thankful for coming through this pandemic. We are thankful for restrictions being lifted. We are thankful that people are recovering from infections. We are so thankful that God has provided everything we need. Somebody ought to be able to give God a shout out in the house today. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Hallelujah. The psalmist says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of of our hands. Good morning, good morning, New Horizons Church family and all gathered online with us this morning. As we unite our hearts and minds in prayer this morning, I remind you that God is good. His love endures forever and his faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we come to you this morning, Lord, rejoicing, singing, praising, giving thanks to you, blessing you, Lord, for who you are, holy and righteous. Father, we say, despite all that is going on in the world, the calamity, the chaos, we will praise you because you are almighty God, creator, ruler, sustainer of us all. So we will praise you this morning, Lord, and we invite your presence to be in the hearts and minds of everyone that has gathered today, Lord. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your spirit. We thank you, God, that we can come to you in this way this, this, this morning. Be magnified. Be glorified through our praise. We ask, dear God, that we will never forget your goodness towards us, despite what's going on. Thank you for your faithfulness that continues to all generations. Be glorified. Be magnified as we give a generous outpouring of ourselves to you in worship today. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Choir, let's praise the Lord today.
Lord, I want to be where you are. For your glory, Lord, we are gathered here today, and we are so grateful that you are tuning in to New Horizons Baptist Church here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Here in New Horizons, we believe we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And our prayer always is that when you have worshiped with us, some of that empowering strength will rub off on you and you will know that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 We have come to the last Sunday of African Heritage Month and we are so grateful that we are able to have our annual African Heritage Month service. And we are also grateful that we have a lieutenant governor in our province who always wants to join us in worship for this service. And so uh, I welcome this morning his honor, the Honorable J. Arthur J. LeBlanc, Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia. As the Queen's representative in Nova Scotia, it is an honor to greet you during the Platinum Jubilee year, particularly on such a notable and happy occasion. A titre de représentant de la Reine en Nouvelle-Écosse, j'ai l'honneur de vous saluer en cette année du Jubilé de Platine, particulièrement en cette occasion remarquable. Et heureuse. Patsy and I were delighted to join the congregation at New Horizons Baptist Church last year for the annual African Heritage Month service. We were hoping to be with you again today, but due to COVID-19 restrictions, I am happy to send virtual best wishes to each of you. Several weeks ago, Patsy and I were proud to participate in the provincial launch of African Heritage Month. We gathered online with citizens to celebrate the culture, legacy, and achievements of African Nova Scotians, both past and present. Individuals such as Wanda Robson, Calvin Ruck and Carrie Best have made lasting contributions to our public policies, social frameworks, and cultural identity. All Nova Scotians have benefited from the African Nova Scotians who came before and worked to make our province a better place. Today, examples of leadership are evident around us. I admire individuals who are committed to their communities. And I know that members of this congregation regularly contribute to worship services, Bible studies, and outreach activities. This work reminds us that all individuals can make a significant and positive impact by creating opportunities for others. Together, we continue to build a province that is based on the values of equality and inclusion. I would like to thank Pastor Britton for inviting me to join you this morning. 
Hats and I send our best wishes for health and happiness to New Horizons Baptist Church. We hope to have an opportunity to greet you in person over the coming months. Thank you. Merci. Wadaliak. We are so blessed to have one of our own coming to us this morning to uh, sing our Black National Anthem. So why don't you join in with Sister Lyris Day in Lift Every Voice and Sing. signal celebration from the earliest time we have moved our feet to the beat of the drum let's do that today hear the drum
shortage of talent in the Day family. The descendants of uh, Brother Buddy Day have long blessed our church with their many gifts, and so we are so pleased today to have Sister Danita Day Williams and her daughter Lyris Day, who are going to share with us now a special medley on this African Heritage Month service. Praise God, praise God, and thank you so much for inviting us here uh, this morning. We are so happy and honored to be back home, back home to our, our home church. Um, so we are, we are blessed and we are happy to be here. And I'm happy to be here with my daughter. Fill me up, fill me up, fill me up. 
ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter in the time of storm, our eternal hope. Our God, our Father in heaven, Father God, we come with grateful hearts, with enthusiasm, with praises, thanking you, Lord, that you have brought us as a people a mighty long way. Father, we thank you, God, for your sweet Holy Spirit this evening, this morning. God, we just praise you for what you have done for us as a people. Oh God, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Father, we thank you, God, that as we look back from where we came, that where, where we are today, God, we know that the hand of Jesus has been on us. Father, we praise your name, God, that we can stand here and say, oh, from the gloomy past till now we stand at last. Oh, God, we thank you and we praise you this morning for New Horizons Baptist Church. For God, you are about to give us 190 years where we can celebrate our witness and, and our testimony, our worship to you. We thank you, God, that you have given us leadership. God, we thank you, God, for our Reverend Dr. Britton. We thank you, God, for our ministers, our deacons, for the various ministries of this great church. We thank you. God, we want to stop this morning and just thank St. Matthew's Baptist. Uh, St. Matthew United Church for helping us, God, in the time of need. Thank you, St. Matthew. Father, we just bring to you all our praises. We bring to you, God, those who are in need right now. Oh, God, for every, any number of reasons, God, people are challenged today. People need the Lord. People are grieving, God. People are feeling the effects of poverty, the effects of mental health, the effects of oppression or depression, mental health issues. God, we need you. Father God, you know all about your people. You know the unrest, Lord, that is in this world today. There are wars and there are rumors of wars and there are diseases in diverse places. People need the Lord. We call upon you right now, Jesus. Come in, Lord, and touch this world. Have mercy on us, dear Jesus. Help us, Lord, as your people. Guide us, direct us. Those who are in positions of power and position and control, oh God, may they be men and women who will stand up with the integrity and the purpose of mind, knowing that they are doing the right thing in the sight of God. We ask your prayers, we invoke your prayers this morning to you. We thank you, Jesus, that you are a loving, kind, compassionate Savior, one that loves your children. That you said, Lord, that seek and we shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. Ask a favor and it shall be given. We come to you, Lord Jesus, in this time, in this hour. In your sweet holy name we pray. Amen. The scripture lesson this morning is taken from Isaiah 55. 1 to 2, I'm reading from New International Vision of the Bible. This used to be a very scripture that I always use when I'm leading the service. Scripture says, Come, all you who thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat, come, buy wine and milk, without money and without a cost. Why spending money on what is not bread and you labor on what is not satisfied? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good 
and you will delight in the richness of fear. This is the word of the Lord. Thank be to God. Amen. The scripture has been read into your hearing. During African Heritage Month, television networks air a lot of historical dramas. The Emmett Till story ran this year. It is the story of a 14-year-old black boy who was lynched in 1955 in Mississippi because he was accused of looking a white woman in the eye and having the audacity to speak to her when he went into her family store where she was the clerk. Unrelated to African Heritage Month, I also happened to see the true crime story of Susan Smith, the white woman in South Carolina who drowned her two sons, aged three and 14 months, by letting her car roll into a lake with them strapped in their car seats. Before the car was found 10 days later, Susan claimed she had been carjacked and that the carjacker had kidnapped her children. Susan said the carjacker was a black man, a claim that was not questioned initially until her story started to fall apart. A claim that was all too easy to make because black men have been criminalized and falsely accused for centuries. A claim that spoke volumes and still speaks today because people of African descent and particularly black men are from their early years targeted and criminalized. These historical dramas are informative but can also stir up troubling feelings. This year, having delivered the annual Acadia Divinity College Simpson Lectures on the topic of anti-Black racism, I was asked the question, in light of our history, how I keep myself from becoming angry and bitter? The answer can be found in this scripture. Consider the invitation in this passage and meditate with me on the thought we have. Let us pray. Lord God, now in this the moment of proclamation, we invite you to open up this word to our understanding. And we are continuously grateful, Lord, that you care enough to send us a word. We pray, Lord God, that the word takes root in us where it will grow and bring forth fruit for the kingdom. And I pray, Lord God, that you would let me decrease now so that you would increase and the word come forth as you would have it. Standing on your truth, God, that when your word goes out, it does not return unto you void, but accomplishes the purpose for which it has been sent. And so we invite you to do a work in us today, in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. In community, we say that African Heritage Month is every month, every day, but February is a highlight month for the rest of the world. We rejoice in who we are as a people, remembering and honoring our ancestors who have gone before and the work and achievements of those among us now. We recognize the great things people of African descent have contributed to societies all over the globe, bringing to the awareness of every generation the importance, the significance of who we are as a people. No matter what some who, may, uh, who want to keep us down may believe, this world is greater because we are here. <laughs> We've been here. We are from the beginning of creation. The Garden of Eden was in Africa. The African presence in the Bible has been suppressed for far too long. I was reading recently that Ethiopia is mentioned 44 times in the Bible, and it seems convenient for some to forget that Egypt is in Africa. Not only that, but in biblical times, Africa and the Middle East were connected. The land connection between the two is why Joseph could take Mary and the baby Jesus from Bethlehem of Judah to Egypt when they fled from Herod's assassination attempt. 
The sons of Noah, uh, or Noah's son, was Ham, and his sons were Cush, and Egypt, and Put, and Canaan. As we read about the people from Ethiopia and Cush, which is now Nubia, in the Bible, or from other regions like Cyrene, we see that these were swarthy, darker-skinned people. All of these regions are in Africa. From Genesis, from the beginning, we have been a part of the biblical story. We have been a part of God's story. The Bible is not a white man's book. That is a lie to keep us from the history and inheritance that is ours. The earliest depictions of biblical people were dark skinned. The earliest depictions of Jesus were of a darker skinned person. The Lord was not painted as a blue eyed blonde until the Europeans presented their art in their way. The Bible is in fact very much a part of our history as people of color on this earth. Our presence in the Bible serves as a reminder to our children that our history does not begin with enslavement on these shores. We have a rich history that is filled with extraordinary people who were prominent in, our, in their day. Our people were people who built pyramids and palaces who made the first clocks and the sundials, who studied the stars and charted them. Our people were scientists and geographers, and they were architects, and we are an intelligent people who do marvelous things. And people of African descent occupy prominent roles today and continue to make significant contributions to humankind and societies everywhere. But in the words of the renowned poet Langston Hughes in his poem, Mother to Son, life for us ain't been no crystal stair. We are a people who have endured cruelty and brutality brought upon us by the most depraved and inhumane beings. We have had our ancestral land trampled upon, ravaged and plundered by money mongers who could not care less about the preservation of, of the natural beauty of the land or the well-being of the inhabitants of the lands they robbed. The natural riches and resources of Africa that could provide for its peoples have been pillaged by outsiders with millions of African citizens left destitute. And I'm sad to say that some of them are not white. What God has provided, evil and corrupt people have taken for themselves and for the sake of profit for the sake of their own comfort, for the sake of their own luxury. Kings have lavished in luxury while their people starve. But despite what has been done to us as a people and to our native land, we are still here. And we are not just surviving, church, in the face of all kinds of opposition and treachery, despite all manner of abuse and mistreat mistreatment with the uh, challenges of marginalization and disenfranchisement, we have come. Part of the power play of white slaveholders was to keep enslaved people ignorant. It was illegal to teach us to read, and those caught reading or writing could be severely punished. They could also be killed. You would think that, that all of that would be behind us, but there is a move today in 2022 to attack education, to keep our children in substandard schools and to hinder their education by preventing a perverted story. And not just the education of our children, the education of children in general 
presenting a perverted story, eliminating the truths of the institution of slavery, the ignorance and false narrative about the inferiority of African descendant people, or somehow that when they were enslaved, they were being cared for and provided for because they couldn't do it for themselves. The ignorant and false narrative um, that comes with all of the stories of the happy slaves, the economic greed and notions of white supremacy that fuel the slave trade, and the power, the hatred, and the vitriol that allowed enslavers to cast aside their humanity and to succumb to their lowest, vilest natures. Some American states are trying to erase a part of the country's history by covering up the ugly, advocating and banning, the, uh, advocating the banning and burning of books that tell the truth. My goodness. The good news is you cannot erase history. There are too many of us who will continue to tell the story. And that story includes the truth that God has delivered. God has healed. God has made ways out of no way. We have lived in devastation and despair. Our families have been ripped apart. Our men have been falsely accused. Our women and children have been sexually molested, violently violated. Our brown and black skin have disturbed some so much that hate rises in them, and then they visit that hate on us. But we have endured, church. We have come. These words of encouragement in Isaiah come from the prophet during the time of the Babylonian captivity. The prophet receives a word from God to share with the people to encourage them through this time, to remind them that God loves them, to remind them that they are not alone, to remind them that God has an eye on them and has a future plan for them. They have suffered, but the time of suffering is ending. They have been subjugated and they have been objects of violence, of mistreatment, of scorn. The prophet declares to them that relief is on the way. God says, come, come to the place of having your needs met. Come to the place of comfort. Come to the place of peace. How many know that God will give you double for your trouble? They have endured decades of being downtrodden and regarded as irrelevant. But God says, come. First Peter 5.10 reminds us, And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. No matter what you have gone through, no matter what you have had to suffer, God will restore and God will use everything you have been through to make you better and stronger than ever. That's a word for somebody today. Do not waste your efforts on what does not satisfy. The world has already shown us that it is not the answer. The false pursuits of money and material things cannot save you. They cannot bring you long lasting joy. We see every day people who have fame and money, but who are miserable. Historically, we see that even the slaveholders did not achieve ultimate satisfaction. That is why they had to demean others. They were trying to make themselves feel better and look better. They had us enslaved, but their souls were imprisoned. Glory to God, we are free. 
We are free. Our spirits are free. And our spirits have been free even when we were in chains. Because once we learn the truth of the word of God, the truth that they tried to keep from us, we learn what we hear in 1 Peter. <laughs> we can find all we need in Jesus. Come all you who are thirsty. Come to the waters and you who have no money. Come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. God has invited us after all we have had to bear <laughs> and we have come. We have come to receive of God through Christ, the living water. We have come to feed on Jesus, the bread of life. We have come despite obstacles in our way. We have come despite enemies that have tried to hold us back. We have come defying the attack of Satan, trying to steal our future. We have come with what we have and with what we lack. We have come in faith and trust in Almighty God who never disappoints. We have come believing the word that God satisfies every need. We have come as witnesses of the truth that God keeps and God provides. We have come declaring that we are God's beloved possession. We have come proclaiming the name that is above every name. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered. We have come as the promise of our ancestors. We have come to the place for which our fathers sighed and cried and died. We have come because God <coughs> has bid us come through all the horror through every indignity, through the terror, through the despair, through the dust, through the violence, through the brutality, and what has been unfair, through the hatred and the vitriol, through unrest, anger, and pain untold, we have out of the gloomy past till now we stand at last where the white gleam of our bright star is cast church we have If you're here this morning and you have not answered the call that Jesus Christ makes from Calvary's cross bidding you to come then why don't you receive him today as your Savior and then allow him to be your Lord Jesus says come to me all who are weary and burdened down and I will give you rest he says come and learn of me Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus wants to be your constant companion and friend. He wants to walk with you. And as you go through this life, with all of its disappointments, with all of its challenges, you can rest assured that Christ is with you. He comes to give you abundant life on this side. That is a life full of joy full of peace, full of love. And then he offers you eternal life on the other side. So when you die from this earth, you do not die 
but you go on to live with him. You go from life to life. It's just a transition. You have not received this wonderful gift that he offers today. Why don't you come? As the choir sings. Please offer him your heart. Offer him your life.